what is going on guys? It's your boy Sissy here, bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm bringing you guys a cool geometric shape stock or creating your own geometric shapes for additional stocks or even textures in this case. I'm going to tell you two things what you can do with this kind of uh, style of, you know, making your own stocks and such. So I got this idea from doing my G, uh, Geo pre-made pack, uh, revamp pack on my Selfie where I want to show you guys how I made some of these stocks in this pack and it can work guys. I can, trust me, this looks very cool and like a nice setting for a clean abstract banner look. Uh, even like a simple setting like I have here for the thumbnail. Um, very, very simple stuff. It just looks really, really good. And things like this that might like, like you would say like it might take a little bit. It's very quick to apply uh, or to create stocks like this in the background to apply them to whatever you want to apply them to. So, of course, if you want to purchase this down below, my new pre-made pack uh, for eight dollars, you get all this cool stuff. Like uh, there's three different versions in this pack where you can do either have hexanes, um, squares, and circles as well. And it comes with a Twitter header. Uh, YouTube banner and avatar like I said if you want to purchase that it's down below in the description if you guys wish to But that's why I'm doing this video to teach you guys how I created that basically and I'm gonna probably apply this to a Twitter header So with that being said, let's get going and by the way, don't forget 200 likes on this You can see it down below. Please enjoy your day guys I'm gonna join mine because I know this is gonna be a very cool tutorial for you guys to learn and of course You can also apply this with abstract looks to where you can get like multiple colors I teach you how to do that too if you guys want to. It's very, very simple and looks really good on even white backgrounds with color and not just a simple one tone black with, you know, putting overlay on it. But all that being said, let's get going. We're going to make this new layer here and we're going to use the squares again. Why not? We can use the squares again. So it's very easy to uh, show how I go about making these things. Now, remember, guys, like I said, I, I did it with hexanes or hexagons. Um, I did it with circles. I can do it with a rhombus. I can do it with like any shape you can create with a pen tool it's very cool and the fact that i'm going to show you how like guys how i like group them together you can even group them differently which like just applies just gives so many limitless uh just stock creations in your mind hopefully it gives you guys some good ideas so on this new layer and on this rectangle marquee tool here we're going to create a nice little square and simply enough just hold shift to make your square a perfect square at all times um so there we go we're going to make it a good size i'll say that's a good size and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just click over here and I'm going to press Alt Backspace so I can quick fill my foreground layer to my selection, which I have in this rectangle here. And now here's how I basically create um, multiple uh, squares with perfect, you know, just perfect, you know, how do you say, like, uh, like perfect, like, you know, how this is more, you know, thinner than this one or whatever, how it may be. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this one. I'm going to hide this one. And on this new duplicate, I'm going to hold control and click on the thumbnail. So once you have that done, all you got to do is just select, modify, and I believe it's contract. And we're gonna do we're gonna do it by like 10 for the first one. So we're gonna press 10, and then we press delete. Oh, on the layer, press delete, and then we have our first square here. And we're gonna just take this original, duplicate it with control J, and then again we're just gonna move it over just a little bit. Do the same exact thing. I'll hold control, click on the thumbnail, which is this little thing right here and go back to select modify contract and now how i give it different tones and different like you know shape of course what i do is put the number up to about let's say 25 this time and it'll cut more out like that and like i said this is really cool for even patterns as well if you want to do this and i believe you can do the same thing exact thing in illustrator if you guys uh quote me on that i'm not don't quote me on that i'm not quite sure if it has a select modify expand and such but i'm pretty sure you can just use uh an illustrator just using the same shape but literally just like holding shift and then like shrinking it down and then using the what is it called the shape builder tool to cut it out but otherwise cool things like this can be made so if i hold shift and just like lower or just make it smaller the square a little bit smaller and then group it like so maybe just a little down why not and go back to the original and duplicate it again so it's very tedious like very 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 tedious but when you guys get the hang of it it's just very simple it's only like three steps and which is contract expand if you want to expand things as well you could but i believe if you don't have to expand it, if the, the original shape is big enough, that's why I want to say make it big enough so it's not like so, you know, hectic and just doesn't look weird. Because when you expand the pixels, the corners will round. And just like you can see, when I'm getting smaller in, you can see the corners are rounding a little bit. But it's okay. It's It shouldn't round too much where it, like, it troubles you. Look like that. Uh, control T, free transform, hold shift, make it a little bit smaller. And it just looks very, very cool. Like I said, um, you can use this and do with different shapes. Like I said, uh, I'm just gonna keep on doing this. Why not for a little bit? Uh, hold Control on the thumbnail, select, modify, contract. And a lot of you guys are like, you know, how'd you do it? I'm just like, you guys don't really know how to do this. Okay, I mean, sure. I'll show you guys some cool things you can do. 
Um, let's do something like that. And I'm gonna try to just keep the spacing, everything pretty good. And like so. So yeah, um, after this, by the way, we're gonna show you guys how to do the, just like making like make it a little bit different. So I'm just gonna just do a couple more of these things. Uh, 45, that's a lot. Yeah, why not? So just giving it different tones, the shapes, different tones, or in different sizings will like give your, the stock itself. It's a very nice little cool feel to it where it's like a nice abstract look, but it looks very clean. And it's just, you know, it's done with perfect, you know, measurements by using contract. So all that cool stuff being said, I'm pretty sure we're good here. You can go as much as you want, but I'll just leave it like this. Um, I probably grouped it a little bit weird, usual than I usually do it. Um, I can probably fix that. But no, we'll just leave it over there. Why not? Okay, that's not bad. Whatever. All right. So once you have this, we're gonna group these together with holding Shift on the first layer, holding Shift until you click on the bottom layer, Control G to group them up together, Control J to make a duplicate, a duplicate. What the hell? A duplicate. And we're gonna hide this layer and then merge this uh, new duplicated group with Control E. Boom. All right, cool. We have our little stock right here. You can see I grouped them just a little bit differently. I had just I basically what I did was just do more squares and just have it like more of a, a, a compacted full-on square. Um, so yeah, that's just how that works there. Um, so yeah, once you've done this, you can do just a cool amount of things with this. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is that you can also, of course, once you have this rasterize and all that cool stuff, you can name it whatever you wanna name it, you know, uh, square stock one or whatever, whatever it may be, control T to free transform. And now you can use either distort, which I, I've been using a lot lately besides just perspective, distort to basically create this very cool you know slant or whatever it may be to this little you know simple abstract you know geo stock here so if it's something like this uh something like that like i said just distort has been just doing me really well because i can just mess around with it as much as i can with these uh, different points um perspective it's just one way so distort i feel like you just it just makes it a lot better you know it, or it, help, it helps me control it a lot better so I'll just leave it like, I don't know, something like that. And this gives it more of a cooler look to than just like, you know, straight on, more of a stock look to it. So with that being said, this can be applied to whatever you want uh, to apply it to. I'll just apply it to here really quick with like, you know, uh, overlay, you know, put it on overlay if we want. It can be applied like that or making it white and putting on overlay so it can get this more of a this look to it. But that's not it. I want to show you guys how I do the simple, uh, this little thing right here where I'm making a nice little color to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this layer, the square stock one, and we're going to go to color overlay and we'll change it to, let's do a nice color. What, blue? Or like, we'll do blue. Or light blue. There we go. That's fine. All right, blue. So I'm going to go over here and select this blue with my foreground color just so I have that color selected at all times. Rasterize this layer over here now. So all you gotta do is very simple, just some pen tool work and some just shading work, I guess you can say. So on this new layer above our square stock one, we're gonna make a new layer as well as right click on that new layer and press con uh, create clipping mask so that it, this layer only applies to what's on the bottom, which is our square stock right here. So if we press P on our keyboard and no, yes, we're not ping on our keyboard. All right, boom. So press P on your keyboard, and we're just gonna simply enough make a nice little triangle on one of these sides of the squares, and then right click, fill path, drop down, use color, and I use this, like, I, I changed the foreground color to whatever the color was, just in case, you know, at all times, I just select over here, and then just move this up or down, or to the left, just so it's a different color, and press OK, and then you can see the two different blues, the tones are fighting each other. This is very, very nice. It's, this is basically how like abstract, um, if ever did like an abstract logo where you can see things like this, it's basically how they do it. It's just like a nice controlled, um, just very even, just making it look abstract and just colorful and, and just cuts, I guess you can say. So different color, uh, slip over here again, why not? And make it this blue. Uh, that, that blue is a little different of a tone. I would change that if I was just trying to make it a little bit like more noticeable like this one. But for now, just leave it like that, tutorial purposes. And you just see me clicking, right click, fill path, drop down, use color. And if I wanted to, I can just simply enough just select the same color over here. Press OK and OK again, delete. I'm gonna do that a couple more times. 
and I'll do it on different like angles, like different ways. Right now, this one way you're doing it right now, you can select it and you only can do it two ways. The way I'm gonna show you after this is where you can make the four different colors. So right click, fill path, drop down, use color. It should be the same color. Boom. And again, why not? We will do it this way since the other one is that way. I know, like I said, this is very tedious, but at the end of it, it just looks, it's a very cool stock to mess around with afterwards. And that looks cool. And da -da 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 -da. I think this is the last one, right? Good. That's why I didn't do too many squares, I guess. This isn't, this process doesn't take forever. All right, boom. So once you've done that, you've basically got a cool little abstract look to it so far, but you can even make it a lot better. I'm gonna duplicate this really quickly and save this one as an original. And I'm gonna group these together now, just so I can have them grouped. I'm gonna do, as actually when I group this, I'm gonna make another duplicate. I just like to make a lot of just, just in cases, I guess you can say, just a, a duplicate of the original so you never mess up the original at all points. So I'm gonna make a duplicate and then I'm going to make it a new layer. So I'm gonna group them together with Control E and then I'll name it now, whatever, abstract, whatever. But I wanna make four different colors. So what I'm gonna do is do the same exact process, make a new layer, right click, create click mask, use my pen tool. And then all you have to do that makes four different uh, tones of the, like whatever shape you're doing, wanna make four different tones. Um, just select where, it's kinda of hard because this is a square. If it was a circle, it'd be a little different or if it was any other color, any other shape. But no matter what, just basically trying to select with your pen tool, two different tones of the color, like so. Once you've done that, right click, uh, drop down layer, um, drop down color, drop down use color. We will use, just simply just, just press white, white right there, press okay, and then delete the path. And then all you gotta do is put, put this on overlay and you should have two different tones of color. You can see that there. I'm just gonna lower that down to about 50. And you can see you got this uh, very nice light blue, darker blue, uh, just a, a lighter blue than this one, and then a super lighter blue than that one. So you can get four different tones. And if you just do this all over again, uh, for all the, the shapes, you can get a very nice look to it. Uh, we'll do it this way this time. I'm just going to do it one more time. Drop, uh, right click, fill path. Drop down, use white. Press OK. Right click, delete path. And then overlay. And then lower it down to about 50. And then, like I said, it's very, very simple to do this. So that's another way of making these stocks like nice and colorful if you're using a white background. Um, to make something like this, though, where I had this like these little geometric like little cuts and just this cool little tearing look I don't know it looks very cool though for like an uh, a background texture or something so to do that is very simple we're just gonna group this together and hide this and go back to our original layer right here that we have I'm gonna turn this back to we'll make this white for a second and we'll make the background black for a second just so it's easy to see and tell what I'm doing all right cool so all you have to do is rasterize this really quickly. All you have to do is make uh, make a bunch of duplicates of this original, and then when you click mask this on the on the duplicated layers, just make it a different color. So I'm gonna make it I'll make it red. Why not? Just so it's visible to see, uh, just so you can show you what I'm doing here. I'll rasterize this, and what I'm gonna do is just gonna move it like so around in the inside. Since, since since this new layer, this new duplicated layer that ha has color on it, so I can show you guys how it's like working in the inside of this layer right here. Since it's clipping mask, it can only apply to what's on the bottom layer, which is the same exact stock. So if I keep duplicating this and make sure I always have this clipping mask, every single one, um, you can do it in a way, like I did it very like precise. I made it so that each like little thing like had like a, had like something to the right of it, like something like this, where it just colored a uh, good like you know you can almost fill the square itself in like with just using your eyes and using the color you know simple stuff like that so I'm just gonna go about that doing like so and I'm not gonna spend too much time on it but I'll do another duplicate it uh, another duplicate and then create a uh, clipping mask and then we'll just say we like that and what I'm what I'm looking at right now is only the red so the white's like not there to me in my mind so I can just like get the little example out there um once you have this on this layer we're gonna duplicate the original one more time we are going to uh, shift click all these together and press control E and then once we have this we will have the entire thing I believe no I think it's easier just do this all right so on this layer I did duplicate the original but on this layer we're gonna shift click the only the red or the different color or the stocks that are inside the original hope I'm not missing you messing you up right now all you're gonna do is like group up together the clipping mask layers control E 
and then we can just unclipping mask it really quickly release clipping mask and now we're gonna be all around the, all around the place all you have to do is hold control select on the original uh, thumbnail like so select you can see that I just select the 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 one stock we used and all I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to here this red I'm gonna use M my keyboard for the uh, rectangle clipping mask rectangle marquee tool so that I can right click select inverse and then I gotta just press delete and then you get what you had without the the original layer on the bottom so hope that I mix you up there I, I talked a lot trying to get you through it it's a very simple process but I want to make sure you guys get it and it's very simple once you've done that you press control D to deselect and then you only have what was on the inside when you did like the clipping mask plus this so there you go you guys just basically split it apart once you've done that you can simply enough make this whatever color you want to make it make it black for now I guess and then rasterize it and then use overlay and then you have your cool little background stock to work with like I did I use white by the way to make this look like that and there you go so like I said I'd apply it to a Twitter header so I can show you guys how I would go about it why not and make it white and if oh by the way if you, for some reason I'm gonna put this out there if you guys do not the, don't know the Twitter dimensions there as followed I use the Twitter dimensions 1500 by uh, 420 or 425 pixels by resolution 200 and then once you've done that you're good to go and that's just how I go about it. Um, it looks a little bit, I feel like not using 500 would just make the quality just a little bit better. I don't know if it's just me, but it, for me it does. I don't know, whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, just make some cool little background stocks like so. I think that works. Control E, overlay it. And then just lower it down a little bit. And then we'll go back over here and take the stock that we had originally. Why not? And use this as well. And I'm just gonna like this is basically how I went and created this by the way I just moved it like so and then I just like basically just messed around a little bit more and of course ended off putting your name and then we're good to go so like I said if I were doing a white background I would probably use a more abstract look to it which was the uh, cool little thing we had over here which was what where was it it's over here boom this little thing I would use more like this if I was using a white background so with that being said I hope you guys got a full-on just like inspiration rush of how much like cool stocks geo stocks you can make and make some really cool revamps on your own and hopefully apply them to some of your works or even your packs like I said I'll be having some of these kind of stocks in my newest experience pack which is my newest personal pack or extra how do you call it Ex exclusive pack yeah on my self buy store so of course Follow my self buy store if you guys haven't yet already. I know it's a little new for me to say that, but follow my self buy store. You can see everything that comes out and uh, just gets emailed to you. You can, you can view it and then you know purchase it if you guys wish to. So self buy.com, so this is HQ for some cool pre mades and packs as low as like five dollars. Of course, follow my uh, Twitter, twitter.com, so that's so HQ, of course. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment any of the tutorials you guys want to do. Please, please, please do so. I love ideas. I love, you know, helping you guys out. And I love basically learning with you guys. This is something I learned while just messing around with my uh, my personal uh, pack that I've been doing. So I just did this. I was like, yo, this is pretty cool to apply to a revamp. So I did the revamp. And now I'm doing a tutorial on it so you guys know exactly how I did it. So please. Don't forget to leave a like, 200 likes on this video, you can see it down below. Of course, you guys already know that. All right, don't forget to check the description, by the way, for the, the revamp pack, as well as um, I did some uh, cool little uh, video on how to create texture stocks as well, like brush texture stocks. So I'll put that in the description, uh, description below as well, if you guys have yet to view that and enjoy that as well. So make some cool stocks for your own and get rid of just having to like rely on Google Images. Let's please get away from that. All right, cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. So switch you out. Peace. Oh,